I live. Damn to die, but Jesus took my place. He bore it all that I might in his presence live. Up Calvary's hill and shame the blessed Savior. Try. He bore it all, it all that I might live. I went to my living Two things they could see by the Son of God. He bore it all, all that, that I, I might, might live. In his presence live. He bore it he all that I might see his shine, shiny face. He bore it freely for it all. I with him might live. I stood condemned to die, but Jesus, he took my place. He bore it all that I might live in his presence. He bore it all that I might see his shine face. He bore it all. He bore it all. I might live with him. I live. I stood condemned to die, but Jesus took my place. He bore it all that I might live in his presence. Live. My precious Savior suffered pain and agony. He bore it all that I might live. He broke the bonds of sin and set the captive free. He bore it all that I might live. In his presence live. He bore it all that I might see. Shiny face, he bore it all. He bore it all. I with him might live. I stood condemned to die, die. but Jesus took, he took my place. He bore it all. all that I might live. Acts chapter 2, uh, beginning at verse number 40, we want to go a little bit further in our text uh, as we look at the theme of being a church that welcomes the weary. Uh, Luke, the author of Acts, writes, and with many other words. Peter testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Uh, then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now, all who believe were together. We're going to look at that. We're all together and had all things in common sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food, how? With gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. I want to speak to you from the subject, the church, a people in need who need needy people. I'll try saying that 10 times. A people in need who need needy people. It may be difficult to fathom, but the church is a group of people who need one another. I need you just like you need me. The brothers need the sisters. Amen, Waltz. Just like the sisters need the brothers. 
Old and young need one another. Rich and poor need each other. Amen. Teachers first needed to be students. Leaders needed first to be followers. And adults needed to start in childhood. Adam needed a help me. And God gave him Eve. Israel needed a leader. And God brought up Moses. The world needed a savior. And God gave us Christ. We all somewhere down the line need something. Be it a spiritual revival. Amen, Tyson. Y'all know it's a song, Lord, send a revival. And let it begin with who? I wish I had somebody wanted to have a spiritual revival start with I amen somebody. We need emotional support. We need physical rejuvenation, financial stability, familial love, or church fellowship. We all need something. Your need may be noticeable or it may be hidden, but still you have a need. You may need a job, amen. You may need a place to live, amen. You may need healing or hope. You may need a friend or a partner. You may need a shoulder to cry on or a place to vent. You may need to get your act together. You may need to step up. You may need to sit down someplace. You may need to start. You may need to finish. Lord have mercy. You may need to slow down. Don't y'all tell me that. Slow down, Tyson. Don't go so fast. You may need to listen. You may need to get to work. You may need to be broken. You may need to back up. Or you might just be in here looking for your boo. <laughs> there are people sitting here right now who need multiple things. There are some who don't even know what they need. But still, we all have needs. Upon our last look at Acts 2, we found a church that was brought together by the drawing power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 3,000 souls were added to the church that Christ built, established and died for. A healthy church is one that continues to stand upon the truth of the gospel message. It is then that the church will begin to draw those seeking God, desiring salvation, and leaving the stress of religious demands behind. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 and verse number 28, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. Jesus says, and I, don't y'all forget this, I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to let you know before we get into this text, maybe on next month, that Jesus is not calling those who got so feet because you stood up all day. Jesus is not talking to those who are sick and tired of back-breaking work. Jesus says, I want to be the rest of the weary who are struggling with the stress of religious demands that are so high you can't reach them and are so low. You can't touch them, and although you've tried to live for God based on how somebody else told you you ought to, I am the one who's God in the flesh, and I'm inviting you to come to me. In other words, if you are tired of trying to be the Christian that Big Mama said you should, you need to look into the book for yourself and know what God demands from his children. I wish I had somebody that was sick and tired of trying to please mama, mama dead and gone. You don't know which way is up, can't please the Lord. You stuck, know you're supposed to be dressed for church but don't want to wear a tie, think you're going to go to hell because you're sitting on the front row and don't have a tie on. Then as many of you who come don't know that you don't even have to do all that much other than praise God, fellowship with the saints, love the Lord, serve the Lord, but you think you got to have some title to please God. God is not concerned with your title. Matter of fact, I tell folk all the time, ain't nobody in the church got a title but God himself. 
And since I'm here, somebody asked me last week, well, you know what happens when, when you introduce your preacher to your friend that ain't a member of the church? You don't know what to call me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are y'all missing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you don't know what to call me. And, 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 and I've had folks say, uh, t- introduce me to their friend and say, this is my pastor. Then roundabout come back and say, I'm sorry I didn't mean to do that, but that's the only, understand, that's the only way she understands who you are to me. <laughs> and I said, now listen, listen, listen. That's what I do, but that ain't my title. My mama named me Tyson. That's my name. As long as God knows me as his child, I'm fine. Now, what I do is feed people every week. So, I pastor people, yes. But just like you don't call your bus driver, bus driver Jerry, you just call him Jerry. You don't call the man who puts out your produce at Albertsons, Nicholas, the produce Nicholas, you just call him Nick. Am I right about it? You don't call him based on his function or what he does, or his job description, you call him by his name. Now, 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 if I tell you I got a good piece of bread from my baker, I'm telling you who he is to me. I'm not giving him extra special wings or a cape or an S across his chest. Hey, man, Walls, I wish I had somebody. Listen, 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 we got to understand. We got to understand many of us are struggling trying to please somebody we don't even know. We're trying to please a mentality that was out there. And that's the reason why when we ain't dressed for church, we ain't going to sit in the midst of everybody else. We're going to sit way in the back. We don't want nobody to see our sweatsuit. But if you're going to work when you leave here, I'd rather you come here dressed for work than not come here at all. You you, you might have your uniform on, Lord have mercy. Uh, And as long as as, as you've got a job, Lord have mercy, I'm glad. And and I'm even more proud of the fact that you're going to come to worship before you go to your job. So come on. Amen. So, 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 so Jesus says, if you're tired of trying to be somebody you know you're not, just give yourself to God. Amen. Quit trying to give God something you're not. He going to make you enough. Didn't we not study that last quarter? Isn't God going to make up the difference in what you lack? When we come to Christ, we all come with some sort of crisis. We all come from something which we need to be saved from. At baptism, we are washed from our sin, born of the water and spirit, translated into the kingdom of his son. Look at what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such, now don't miss this now. Paul says, and such, and such, oh, y'all get me to and such, were were some of you. Now, the question that I got for you, probably ain't nobody ever asked you, is how did you go from a was to a were? Anybody want to answer that question for me? I know know this is not Bible class, but can you think about that for me? How you go from a was, and it is, to a were? How, how do you go from a is to a word? That's the question I want to How do you go? How do you go from used to be that and to now, now, now you're not that no more? How, 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 you go, how, how do you become an ex? Or maybe that's the better question, Brother David. How do you become a former or an ex? Now, those of you who ever broke up with somebody, you know something happened to make that person your ex. Oh, come on, y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You, 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 you know it put a lot of strain on you when you come to church and you see. <laughs> y'all gonna help me preach this morning? Now, come on now. Y'all, y'all know what it's like when you come across, you run across your, your ex. They look at you funny. You look at them funny. You kind of want to know what they've been up to because you nosy, it, amen. <laughs> and, and you want to know if they've been making it since they became your ex. And it probably pleased you if they fell on their face a few times. <laughs> But something happened for them to become your ex, right? Now, what you watch this. In the sight of God, you went from one thing to something else, right? But the question is, did you do it or did God do it? Right. Are y'all missing this? Y'all missing it? See, see, what saves me from being a fornicator is not because of my strength. What saves me from being a fornicator is because God 
cleansed me with the, with the blood of his son and washed me and sanctified me and set me apart. Now I know where I've been and I know who I've been with and I know when I was with him. I wish I had somebody that could say amen with me. Y'all can sit there and act like you don't want to be honest if you would. Look, my pre you got to be honest with yourself. Like, like if you want to sit in front like it don't bother you, that's all right. Uh, but it's still going to bother you, amen. Just be real about it. That's all. Listen, listen, there's a reason. Now, the reason I'm trying to show you is that God has done something. He has taken us from here to there. Now, Paul says, listen, uh, these folk ain't going to inherit the kingdom of God. But I want you to watch this. You used to be one of them. Now, y'all do realize that the church is made up of all kind of people, right? We all used to be X. Maybe that's my sermon. I am. <laughs> X what? X what? We got cards down front. Do we need to pass the cards out? We all have been saved from something. And if you're honest with yourself, although you may be an ex, it still be on your mind. Yeah. Amen, Walls. Yeah. Amen. Listen, listen. Uh, you got to talk to a reformed abuser. And they'll let you know, even though they have them used, they still are at it. Right. You know that? They fight with it every single day. They think about it every single day. You got to make up your mind every single day you wake up, I'm not going to take a drink. I'm not going to use cocaine. I'm not going to smoke weed. You got to every day in your mind. And if you're honest with yourself, whatever your struggle is, every single day, you got to make up your mind. Every single day. That, that's the reason why Paul would say the outside man is perishing, but the inside man being renewed how often? Day by day. You got to make up your mind. You, you got to make up your mind today, no matter how bad I feel, I'm not going to let nobody take me there. If you don't make up your mind, the moment, amen, somebody cross you, cross, cross eyes with you, you're you going to forget, and you're going to go back, and you're going to turn in your ex. <laughs> Although we have been saved from the power of sin, we must still deal with sin's effects on humanity. We have scars blemishes and marks of sin in our lives however God still uses the broken to build the foolish for wisdom the weak for strength and the weary to endure a healthy church recognizes that people have mess that need the attention of Jesus a church that is living and thriving is one that has a dynamic message but delivered by desperate messengers and y'all know who's talking to you right now? A desperate messenger. The Lord's church was designed to draw seekers and be a place of refuge for the fugitive, all while depending on the power of the word, worshiping God, and doing the work of the Lord. I got 10 minutes left. I'm going to give you one point. The text shows us the church has some needs. I'll give them to you up front because we're not going to cover all of them. The first one is we all need consistency. That's number one. Two, we all need connection. And three, we all need communion. And I'm not talking about when we get up here in a few minutes and pass out the emblems. We need to have a common bond with each other. Consistency, connection, and communion. Now, have you ever started something but you wasn't consistent enough to keep it up now come on now y'all know it's only january the 11 right <laughs> saw a quote on facebook the other day said new year's resolutions are just your things to do list for the first week of january <laughs> if you can't get it done the first week of january it just ain't gonna happen amen so you try to go to the gym you know you strong first two three days and you get sore Come on, y'all, like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Back hurt, legs hurt, thighs hurt. You got muscles hurt, didn't even know you had. And then some excuse comes up as to why you can't go the next day. 
Then a reason comes up. Then a flat out, I don't feel like it comes up. And before you know it, you're going to the gym ever so often. And you're in consistent. You try to eat right, Lord have mercy. I was, I was gung-ho. I make my wife protein shake every morning. Never tasted it in my life. I decide this year, I'm drinking shakes. <laughs> Whipped that shake together, poured some for her, poured some for me, and, and, and I got some on my finger and just went like this. Mm. <laughs> this stuff is nasty. <laughs> she drank it the next day. I ain't started no shakes. You know why I'm inconsistent. Okay, I didn't even start. I can't even lie. I didn't even start. You gotta, inconsistent is start, stop. I didn't even start. You try, you try to go to Bible class. Now we're going to get close, close to home. Now, I love, I love the first Sunday and, and, and first Wednesday in January, boy. Woo! Folk gets, get, get, they remember their salvation, you know. <laughs> Last week we had more folk. We didn't even know where to sit, folk, you know. <laughs> you remember God when the calendar crossed over, right? And uh, folks showed up, man, Brother Davis, we was trying to figure out where they're going. We had folks sitting all over the place. And then, you know what happens? You come back the next week, and it was, it was cool, you know. But then... Then your team make the NFC championship, you know. <laughs> and they play the early game. Now I'm going to tell on all the Cowboy fans. They was all at church at 7 this morning. I got here at 7. I saw four, five Cowboy fans <laughs> praying for their team. And, and, and they ain't going to stay for Bible study because the game come on at 10. They're going to be out of here in a minute. If you let me go too long and the prayer requests be too long, they might walk out. <laughs> It ain't because they disagree, it's because the game kick off in a couple of minutes, you know? L Listen, listen, listen. You know, we, 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 we start, and then we stop. We start, and then we stop. And we can't never seem to get it going, and we're inconsistent. Listen, you young guys, let me tell you something. Uh, Y'all give Miles and Rihanna some love. Next time we see them, they're going to be married. That's right, all right? Now, I tell, I tell young guys, I tell young guys, when you dating a young lady, if you start something, you can't stop it. You can't stop it. <laughs> now listen, one thing I love and respect about Brother Sister El Pay was Sister Sister El Pay, I ain't never seen that woman open her own car door. Brother El Pay, it, it, it don't matter. He could be talking to somebody. He gonna go around the side of the passenger car he going to open the door, he going to open it, and she going to get in. Now, now, when I was told by an old guy, I said, listen, son, don't you start nothing you ain't willing to do. <laughs> when me and Jen got together, I'm click, click, get in. <laughs> I ain't starting nothing. Because I ain't going to be able to keep that up. <laughs> Don't start nothing. See, then there is no expectation. <laughs> so I, I, I set the bar real low so I keep hopping over it. You set it too high, you can't reach it. I, I thought the sisters was going to say amen. Listen, you don't, you, you don't want him whining and dining you when he trying to win you. And then once he think he got you, he stop all of that. I'm trying to bless somebody. This, I'm trying to bless somebody. Listen. Sa sa same thing, same thing, brothers, the same thing. Listen, you, you wanted to be consistent, amen? You want to be consistent. So consistency messed all of us up. But do you know the church had a specific need to be consistent? Y'all notice in the text, the Bible says they continued daily. That means it couldn't be once a week. Oh, now I'm hurting somebody because we ain't seen you since last Sunday and we ain't going to see you again until next Sunday. You do realize you need us and we need you more than just two hours a week. Amen. We need each other. Amen. And the way God set this thing up in Acts 2, it was to be continuous and ongoing and consistent and daily and always there and always for you because he knew what we needed. And when we're inconsistent in our walk with God, it tells on us in crisis. Can we be honest? We tell on ourselves and how we walk with God if we've been inconsistent and then trouble happens. 
Because you know what happens when trouble happens? If you're inconsistent in your walk with God, honestly, you don't know what to do. Now, I'm going to show you something. Those of us who do walk with God consistently and trouble hits, I want you to watch this. We also don't know what to do. But we trust the one who does. The person who's inconsistent trying to figure out whether or not God really going to handle it. Now, for one who walk with God, I'm just letting y'all know. And we, 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 you, you be faithful as all get out, but when trouble hit, there are things you may not know. What should I do? How should I respond? What should I do with this? But those who are faithful know you can't make no difference in it. No way. God right. running the show. Just give it to him. Turn over and go to sleep. <laughs> so when trouble hit, if you've been inconsistent, see, now that messes with us. And when people get in trouble, you know what happens? If they've been inconsistent, the first thing they do is come back to church, sit on the front row. One brother I tease all the time, leave his name out. He come to church, and uh, you don't see him, don't see him, don't see him, don't see him. And then, then he come in when there's a problem. And when I saw him one time, he was sitting on the front row. I said, man, somebody must be looking for you. <laughs> Not only are you in church, but you're on the front row. Are you really trying to hide? Because you know if anybody going to meet you outside, they're not going to walk all the way in in the front. We, 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 we wait till we get in trouble. Then all of a sudden, we want to walk with the Lord. That's a mark of inconsistency. Now, let me give you this one point. We're going to be done. There is something to the notion of continuing. Our text says that the church continued in the apostles' doctrine or in teaching. They continued in fellowship. They continued in breaking of bread. And they continued in prayer. The word, the verb continue there modifies each one of those things. Breaking bread, fellowship, teaching, and prayer. So they only use the word continued once, but it applies to all of those actions. The phrase continued in means consistently or daily. It is in persevering in some activity to the point of devotion. You do it so much, folk know that's what you do. Because you do it so much. Folk know, oh, that's what they do. Because you do it all the time. It becomes almost just about who y'all are. Because we know. Listen, y'all know when Brother Davis do the opening prayer, he's going to get up and say, news flash. God is still good. You know why? Because that's what he do. Amen, Walls. Y'all know when Derek lead the singing. What, what did he say this morning? I'm going to say to say, if you're happy and you know it, what? Half y'all said, clap your hands. He said, no, tell your face. He does that all the time, right? It, matter of fact, we almost begin to identify folk with what they do all the time because they're consistent in doing it. Watch this. When folk act consistently crazy, don't try to change them. That's, they're telling you who they are. The church was busily engaged in coming together to learn the word, fellowship with one another, to eat, and to pray. Consistency is crucial for the growth of anyone or anything. Can we be honest? Don't a plant need water and light to grow? A student needs persistent mental challenge to soar to greater academic heights. Babies need continuous nurturing and nourishment to develop into adolescence. A Christian needs consistent instruction and encouragement in the word, a stable group of brothers and sisters for fellowship, a stable group of brothers and sisters for, a stable group, a state, a, 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 st a, a stable group, you got to be careful who you hang out with. Uh, brothers and sisters for fellowship, an unending connection and acceptance around the table, and unceasing prayer. The church was consistent in teaching the word of God. Like food for the body, the word of God is to the soul, who longs for nourishment, strength, and endurance. Continuing in his word is how we stay connected to God. 
Brother Tyson's not trying to run nobody over who don't stay for Bible class. And you got to understand, you got to advocate with me. You know, we, I, I, uh, being the elders, and we have no problem telling you, we talk all the time, well, why so many people leave, you know, right after worship, and they don't stay for Bible study, or don't come on Tuesday, don't come on Wednesday, and, and we got to talking about the challenge we as, as Crenshaw, we have to face, and we're always looking for ways to feed more people and to be available to more people, and we're trying to figure it out, and uh, one of the things it just came down to is you can't complain when your product is bunk. No, that's right, I said it. If, you, if your product ain't good, why do you expect people? You know, Tyson, the word Bible class is not bunk. No, but the teacher could be. And the teacher don't study no lesson, ain't got no word from the Lord, stand up here doing tricks and telling jokes. He ain't feeding you. Then we get mad at people for not coming to stay and listen to that. I wish I had somebody that don't stay for Bible study because we don't put out a good product. Say amen. Can we be honest? Now, now, some of you, guess what? The teaching is good. You just decide you don't need it. So there's two sides to every coin. We as elders and preachers got to do better at making sure we have men and women who know how to conduct themselves as a teacher in the church, right? But at the same time, we got to have folk that want to seek the Lord while he may be found. So it worked both ways. But we got to be more consistent. We start something on one week, then we don't want to do it the next. No. There's a saying Horace and I came up with when we started men's ministry. Once the boat leave the dock, there ain't no coming back. We're going to start something. We're going to be out here on the high seas. Now, the boat might rock. We might run into some storms. But we can't stop doing what God asks us to do. Now, maybe some time, Brother Barry, where we lost and don't know where we are. But we're not going back. There ain't no going back. Consistency says, I'm going to keep up and keep at it and keep on and keep up and keep at it until the Lord show me what I need to see. Right? Reading, studying, meditating, and living God's word is how we eat and mature into fully grown Christians. Consistency means daily. Daily connection with God daily connection with others, daily connection with the church, daily connection to Christ, daily connection to your family, daily connection to the Holy Spirit. You can't make it on a weekly regimen. Quiet up in here. We need the Lord every day. There's a song we sing, the Lord is blessing me right now. Lord is, I'm done. Lord is blessing me, right? Y'all didn't think I could preach 30 minutes, did you? Ah! <laughs> New Year's resolution. <laughs> I, I, I might have a response card for you next week. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, preacher, what you asking me to do? Well, I don't want you to leave the room without recognizing and understanding that you need God every second of every minute of every hour of every day of every week. You need it. Now I want you to know there are different ways you stay, walk, and connect with God. Now, of course we know prayer is talking to him, so that's the easy one, right? Mm -hmm. We can pray, but let's be honest, you can't pray every single second of every single hour of every single day. So we recognize we pray without ceasing. But that prayer is something we ought to do every day, more than once a day. But we ought to pray. Two, we recognize that the connection to God can be done through reading and understanding and applying his word. Right. So we recognize that connecting to God is listening to him speak to us. And we get that through daily uh, study of the scripture and understanding of the scripture. So those things, that's low-hanging fruit. We can all identify with that, right? But you know, there's other ways we can connect with God. When you serve him and live out his word, you do realize you are becoming a part and you are being a part of the will of God. Because God wants his people to do certain things. And when you do those things, you're connected to him because he's the one told you go do it. And you become God's hands and ears and feet in the community right here. 
And you can be a blessing to other people as an extension of what God is doing through you for them. But then watch this. We also, when we're connected to one another, get the blessing of staying connected to the Lord. See, you do realize it takes two people to let go. Now, if you hold me up, I might not be holding myself up, but I'm being held up. So if only one of us is working, at least I'm still being held up. But if you let go and I let go, then I'm going to end up on the floor. Now, can we be honest with ourselves? We all have family members and friends and people that we know are members of the Lord's church but they have become disconnected through inconsistency. Ain't seen them in church, can't find them in Bible study, don't want to come to nothing. They, they just have disconnected for whatever reason. Well, honestly, we had to make up in our mind whether or not we was going to keep trying. And when you get tired of getting turned down, you just throw your hands up. But when you throw your hands up, you let go. And maybe, just maybe, you checking in on that person consistently is the one piece of connectivity that they need Amen. to stay close to God. Maybe you it. You, you are it. So we got to be honest with ourselves. We can be connected to God by simply making phone calls of encouragement to somebody you know who need it. Now, phone calls of encouragement don't include gossip. I think I need to say that while I'm here. It, it, don't, it don't include that. And, and watch this. You don't even have to want anything. So many times we call people and they're like, well, what you want? I had a preacher call me a few months back, a uh, guy I look up to and admire. I answered the phone. He said, listen, I don't want you to say a word. Just listen. He went two minutes, told me he loved me, and said goodbye. Oh, man. I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't have no, hey, man, how you doing? How's the family? How the kids? How the sermon? How the preaching? How the, uh-uh, uh-uh. Just listen. Don't say nothing. I got something I want to say to you. Bulk of his message, son, I love you. I'm proud of you. Have a good day. That's all it took. Stay connected. God used him to encourage me. He didn't want nothing. He wasn't asking me about how things going to church. He wasn't asking me what not blood curl getting in your way, stepping. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I love you. I'm thinking about you. I'm proud of you. Have a good day. See, when you do stuff like that, see, that, that's partnering with God, doing his will. Reaching out to encourage somebody else. Now, I want to offer the invitation this way. We believe in God who is a provider. Am I right about it? Yes. Don't we believe God will provide? Yes. Now, if, if for, for you, for you uh, word origin people, you do realize uh, provide and it is connected to the word providence in the Bible. And when we say God has providence over the world, it means God know what's going to happen before it's going to happen. All right. So when God provides, if you just look at the word pro and vi, vi comes from the word where we get vision. Pro means before. So God sees or has the vision and puts into place before you actually need it. Now, when you watch this. God set this thing up in Acts 2 to be a blessing for us in 2015. Amen. That's why we got to go back to the blueprint. Acts 2 said they did it consistently. Yeah. They continued daily. And you know why God set it up that way? Because he knew you and I was going to need it. Amen. We were going to need to be surrounded by a group of people who recognize that they belong to the Lord, that are forgiven sinners, that are trying to do what's right, make heaven their home. He knew we were going to need people that can identify with our faults, uh, faults and frailties. He knew we were going to need people around us that loved us for us, did not expect us to be anything but who God made us to be, 
that accepted us the way we are. God knew we needed that, and he gave it to us in the church. So I'm asking you this morning, will you be consistent? Will you think about it? Don't, don't be like me and taste it and be like, ugh, and not even give it a try. You may be in the room and come from another church where they did you wrong and did you dirty. I don't know what church it is. Can't go back and fix it, but you're here today. But don't hold against us what your last congregation did to you. Amen, Walls. You know, we'll make people pay for stuff that they ain't had nothing to do with, but somebody else who looked like them did it. And you, you're not consistent now because you're still kind of a little weary and wary of you know, church people and their antics. And you don't trust nobody because what happened at the last church and when your grandmama died, they didn't surround you and you didn't like the way they did you. So now you come here and you kind of stand offish because you're not sure. Oh, it's quiet. It's quiet. I know it is. It's quiet. And so you won't be consistent. You won't give yourself away. You won't come and be involved. You, maybe you tried and, and ran into the wrong person. And listen, we got some people in the audience that you don't go talk to them. Yeah, don't. Mm -mm. No, no, Lord. I be praying, please don't sit them down next to him. Okay, please. Please, Lord. I recognize there are people here who bite your head off. They are. But there's more good folk who try to do what's right. And please don't judge us based on our two or three that need some help. I hope you don't judge me based on my one sermon. Because I lay eggs all the time. Many of y'all been here and seen them eggs? Cracked them? You don't always do it right. We make mistakes, but, but, but God is still set it up right. Regardless if people try to mess it up, God is still set it up right. I'm begging you to be consistent. I'm begging you to, to make up your mind right now that you know what? We'll get this thing another try. Because God is still on the throne. And he's still worthy of all the praise, honor, and glory we can give him. And don't make up your mind about the Lord looking at the people he's trying to redeem. Jesus died so that we could be free from sin. Established his own church and wanted them to look like this. So that guess what? We can be X. But we got to be around other X's so that we can loose the shackles of the things that used to bog us down. And we're all here celebrating God on Sunday morning because God has loosed us from our shackles. I know I look good and cleaned up and yeah, I wear it well, but we all fronting on that end. We all dress it up nice, but on the inside, we hurt just like you hurt. We grieving like you grieving. We got issues that need tissues. We all have it. We just want you to keep coming, keep trying, keep praying, keep singing, keep serving. Keep loving your wife. Keep loving and supporting your husband. Keep following him even when he's messing up. Keep on. Don't give up on your kids. Keep loving them. Keep providing. Keep doing what's right even though it don't feel good. Keep on. Be consistent. Keep coming to church. Keep working with the song leader. Keep working with the preacher. Keep working with the elders. Keep on. Don't give up on us. Can we just decide to keep on keeping on? I know that sounds like 70s talk, but can we just keep on keeping on? Can, can we just try? If, if, if you're about ready to walk out on somebody, can you just give them another, another few more days? Can you just keep on? Can you try? Can you try harder? I know you tried and they cut you. Can you try again? I know they slapped your hand away. Can you send it out again? Can you just keep trying? Can you keep trying? Can you, will, you, will you decide right now I'm going to keep on keeping on? And, and I pray that even if I don't make it, if God called me, he called me in the middle of me trying and trying and trying, not having given up. Because Lord have mercy. When I look back at my life, if God would have given up on me years ago, I would be dead and gone. But his love keep blessing me and blessing me. He keep cleansing me and cleansing me. He keep loving me and loving me. He keep giving me his grace over and over and over again. You need to come get in on that. You hear you're not a child of God. We beg you to come. If you come, you need to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. He hung, bled, and died on the cross of Calvary between two thieves. The Bible says they buried him in a tomb. Early on Sunday morning, he got up from the grave, and that empty grave proves that our Savior lives. You come to him by faith, having heard and believed in the word of God, being willing to repent of your sins. Confess with your mouth that he's the Christ. 
We bury you in water for the remission of your sin. You come up a new creature in Christ Jesus. We beg you to remain faithful unto death. You too shall receive a crown of life. If you're a child of God and you've been inconsistent, now's the time. Now's the time for you to make up your mind. I'm going to get this thing right and I'm going to keep on keeping on. Do you need to come? We beg you to come right now. Together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Will you come? I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have alert my sight. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad. He's so glad and free. He's us greatest, highest. I God bless you, Angelique, as you come. Do we have another? We beg you to come. God bless you. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin.